Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are a returning, <laughs> I was going to say a returning customer <laughs> um, yeah, if you are viewing my channel again, welcome back um, I am just going to get stuck in because I have a lot to talk about and I might not have, I've actually got a backup camera today in case I run out of uh, run out of uh, time on my memory card so I will get stuck in. So I made an order of on woollynet.com and it was during their Boxing Day sales. Although I made my order late on Christmas Day simply because um, a lot of these things ran out, especially these big hanks. These were uh, their big, I'll, I'll talk about these first then. These were their big, uh, their DK weight Merino 500 grams hanks. And I bought two colourways. I bought oatmeal, which is this one, this lighter one here. And I bought charcoal grey. Now the oatmeal one um, is a very nice light beige shade, very neutral. And um feels very good. I'm hoping this camera focuses. This is a different DSLR camera I'm using today. Yeah, so, and, um, yeah, these are uh, really nice hanks. They are usually £18, and right now they were 2 for 12 which is incredible. I think it was 65% off. Um, so I bought four of them. I'm just showing two here because um, they're quite big, and I will be kicking these up, and um, I bought four of them and four of them, so I've got a kg, 505, two kgs of each colour and that should be more than enough for a sweater weight quantity for myself. Um, this shade was kind of true to the website, I think it was very similar. However, this shade, uh, this is called charcoal grey and it was a lot lighter on the website and I wasn't sure about it because I thought I'm buying a steel grey. But I still wanted it because it was a great price, and um, but it turned out to be extremely, well, a lot more darker than it was than I thought it would be, um, and it's also got this amazing tinge to it that is not exactly grey. Like in this light, there's almost a green shade coming from it that uh, reminded me a bit of the Marsh Green DK Weight Worth Mill yarn, but. In some lights there's actually a blue tinge to it and it's just so nice and I'm so glad I bought four hanks of these. It is definitely not like this, the, the kind of lighter grey shown on the website and I think that might be due to the flash. Uh, sometimes it can, like I said, I know how difficult it is to photograph fibres accurately to get the colour across accurately and um, really knit. Uh, as, uh, Ruinit are one of the best at doing this, um, you know, getting the colour across accurately. But I love this colour even more, so this was a very nice surprise. Yep, and I bought um, 10, I'm showing 5 here, but 10 of these Diggle DK weight uh, Ruinit uh, skeins, and they are, I think they were 10 for £20. Uh, and they are 97% British oil and 3% silk and they're very soft. And I was just noticing that I, I, I there was lots of colours there but, and especially this one called Autumn Red caught my eye. But for so, I'm going towards these colours now and I've noticed that this is becoming a lot more popular <laughs> in my stash that I'm growing. Um, I, I, like, I do like my browns and my dark greens but I am going more towards the pages as well because if you look at this shade, and that shade is very similar. And if you remember um, Skidonet, that's this one here. I mean, these are all within that. This one's a bit darker, but they are all within that shade family. This is slightly lighter. But yeah. 
and I am predictable, so these are upside down, but I bought more of the dark natural grey, which is just, I can't stop myself from buying this, it's, this colour is so nice. It's just such a comfortable go-to colour for me. I'm finding I'm making, uh, it's my like, first choice for a lot of things. And at the same time, I don't want to use too much of it because, like, <laughs> I'm really bad at this. I'm, I am, I am quite, I've got a hoarder personality and I am trying to um, make it so that I use the stuff I buy. But sometimes I just like to sit there and look at it, which is not good. And this is one of those things and I am making myself use this. But, um, yeah, this is a DK weight. I've got, this is my third packet of this <laughs> and I have got three cones, so I've got plenty of this. So I need to start using it. And again, it's just such a nice, warm, brown, grey shade. Very, very comfortable. And I just bit the bullet and bought, because it came back into stock, five more hanks of Nazareth. Now, I've spoken about Nazareth before, so <laughs> I think everyone knows how much I love this colour. Let me focus there. This colour is very, very... Uh, out, almost autumnal, harvesty, but neutral. I don't see anything that this wouldn't look good in. Like any garment this wouldn't look good in. I really like this shade. Let's see if I can focus a bit more. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to talk about a few of my well, I wanted to talk about my knitting progress and where I am. So, I did uh, mention that I had um, cast on a shawl, and it was called the Playful Shawl by Meg Gatsby. Sorry, I'm going to have to squeeze on you while I bring So, this has got four different <laughs> balls I'm working on because it is... Um, I made the mistake of starting off something by holding two different colours held double. So I've got four balls of skins I'm working on. But, um, and I was this close to like just frogging this at the start, especially because I found this start bit very difficult to get the hang of. And I find that um, every single time I use a new yarn, or even the same yarn on a new needle, it is a learning process from the start again. It takes me a while to get used to it. And then once I've got used to it, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's fine, but you have to learn each time. Um, I start a new yarn or use a new needle. Okay, so this is getting on uh, along. I feel like this is going to be a long hog though, because it is... I mean, I work on this every day. My rule is minimum four rows, and uh, it is getting there, but I feel like it's going to be a few months before I can um, finish this. A few days I've, I've managed to do about 8 or 16 rows, one day I've managed to do 20 rows. And also these rows are getting a lot longer. If you look at to here, this row was a lot short. So you could do a lot of rows in one day. But now these rows are extremely long. So, and also what I've done is that when I started this, I started, um, this is a dark grey natural, my, my lovely yarn. And this is a burgundy hank. So these are fingering weight, they're four ply, and if you hold them double, they're DK weight. So, and it's recommended four millimetre needles. So when I started here, it was four millimetre needles. But I feel like it was too tight. I don't know if this is normal, like all this kind of ruching, but I mean, I've heard that you can like fix this after blocking. But to me, this was very uh, tight. I like it because it's very squishy. But again, it's like, do I honestly need it that tight? And um, I did it up to, where is it? This stitch marker. So up to this stitch marker, oh, this is showing. 
this is all four millimeters and then beyond this stitch marker it is 4.5 so this is 4.5 millimeters now I don't think that is much of a difference uh, in terms of appearance maybe just a slighter slightly uh, thicker stripe barely noticeable right, barely noticeable if you look at that stripe and that one but um, you can and this is this is this uh, sorry this fabric is more kind of um, spread apart it's thinner um, and it feels lighter but it's still quite squishy and it's nice I feel like this bit is going to be extremely warm <laughs> um, but yeah so I've changed it to 4.5 so I am working on that at the moment um, a few other things I um, started doing a leg warmer just in stocking it and yeah I don't think I've got it quite right I think this needs I think a leg warmer kind of needs to have ribbing on it and um, I need to practice my ribbing I'll show you why in a sec <laughs> but this I think I'm gonna frog this is a drops Andes the yarn is yeah, it's 65% wool, 35% alpaca. It's super chunky. Um, and I'm getting used to it. But this yarn really dries out my fingers. And I uh, I have to use um, a balm that I've made a long time ago to, um, to kind of remedy that. But this does uh, dry out my fingers. It's not... Uh, compared to the Drops Wish, which is the two yarns I was using together, I was using Drops Sandies and Drops Wish, um, on two garments and the drops Andes is definitely the drier of the two drops which is amazing to work on oh damn that's one thing I forgot I think I forgot to bring those hats because that was a completed garment I have never made but okay so I'm not going to go <laughs> I'm just going to continue on and maybe show those next time but yeah so I'm going to just frog this I think now I wanted to, I think last time I mentioned that I was uh, planning on making another shawl, casting on another shawl um, because this shawl was showing me two techniques, it was showing me KFP, knit front back and it was showing me uh, K2 tog, which is knit two together and there was another shawl called the Simple Shawl by um, Jane Hunter and her, her pattern shows how to Oh, what is it? It was showing how to yarn over, I think, and another technique that I thought I'd cast that on. Now, I think a lot of you might think, um, why do you need a whole shawl to learn a few techniques just to make a swatch? It's because I am a very slow learner in knitting. Like, it took me a year to come to this point. Uh, I am absolutely shocked at people who say that their uh, second ever garment that they uh, are uh, you know are making after learning how to knit are like cable knit sweaters or um, you know color rock jumpers or <laughs> do, do you know what I mean it's not it doesn't come naturally to me I'm a very slow learner in knitting it again I've said it uh, more than once I took me six months to learn a knit stitch um, but I made a swatch for the simple shawl and I made it out of, oh damn, do you know I've forgotten to bring the the cinnamon brown colourway and I made it out of harvest and this is what I got this is, I think it's on 5mm needles combining both of them, the cinnamon brown is um, do you know what, I, I'm going to have to bring that, I'll bring my that's as well because it's difficult to show you this without showing you that. I thought I was organised but I obviously have a lot of things today. So I will stop the video here and restart. Oh and I am back. Sorry about that. I am... Um, I try not to overtly edit my videos. That was one of the rules for making this YouTube channel. Um, I had this issue with my computer back in August. Um, I had the blue screen of death. I lost quite a lot of stuff, it was a very stressful time and a lot of that was my editing software that I used to use. It wasn't really much, um, you know, it was something that you can download freely but it was just, 
quite stressful at the time, so I just made a, I told myself that if you want to do this channel, just do a whole video in one edit, like in one shot, um, so that you have less time to work on, because do you know what, I, it takes a lot of time to just write down the timeline on the description box, and I feel like that's important if I'm making a channel about fibres, and what I like and what I don't like, and where to buy it from, and so forth. So yeah, the less editing I have to do, the more likely I will be making more videos, and that's honest truth. But let's get back to this swatch. This is for the Simple Shawl, and I initially wanted to make it out of Harvest DK Worth Mill yarn and Cinnamon Brown 4-ply British Wool Cone. And these are one of my two favourite shades. At least my two favourite colourful shades. Yeah, but okay, and I started off here, it's rolling up a bit. I started off here with 4.5 here, and then I graduated to 5 down here. And I think the 5 is absolutely fine. It's still giving me a very dense fabric, I'm sorry because this is rolling up. I think I should be blocking this as well. I don't know how to block, I've never blocked anything before. I really don't want to, <laughs> so if I can avoid it, I will. But um, this is five millimeter here, and um, this is four point five at the start. This has turned out. I mean, you, you. I don't like swatching in general, and a shawl would be the last thing I would swatch for. I mean, I mean. I'd probably force myself to swatch for a garment, like a, a jumper, or a vest, or a cardigan, you know, just because um, gauge on that would be important. But for a shawl, I didn't, I mean, I did not swatch for my um, uh, playful shawl at all. And I don't think it's something you need to, uh, too much. Um, but I just swatched, so I wanted to see what um, these two, you know, these two colours would create, and to be honest, I think it's not created something that is individually like this better than what I'm getting already. Like cinnamon brown on its own is better, I think, than this watch. And I think harvest, in terms of like colour and so forth, on its own is better than this watch. This watch is between what I'd call a mottled and a speckled. Um, example. I might be wrong, I don't know all the jargon yet, but yeah, it's um, there's more cinnamon in certain areas and there's more harvest in certain areas, so that to me is kind of like a speckled effect. I, I don't know, I just don't think it's like if I just used a harvest on its own, it'd be better, but then after using uh, making this watch, I changed my mind entirely about the colour, so I thought I would do the Mallard Green mixed with Drops Brushed Alpaca in, uh, oh god, what was this? This is forest green that, well, apparently it says uh, it's forest green, but it's petrol blue to me. And I made this watch. Now, this watch is so, so soft and cosy, and I was holding one mallard green with uh, one those, and I was using a 5mm and um, I just started off uh, with a guard tur stitch here and then I graduated towards a uh, stocking knit and this is the stitch where I, <laughs> where I realized that I don't know how to rib. I thought I knew how to rib, knit one, purl one, seems simple but yep, no Look at this awful mess. I hope it's in focus. Sometimes my own eyes aren't in focus, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the camera's in focus or not. And I do apologise for that. But yeah, this uh, this is why I when then I realised, sorry, that I need to I need to practice how to rib. Um But yeah, again, this fabric as soft as it is, as nice as it is, just wasn't making me like it more than mallard on its own which is absolutely stunning you know uh, it was making me like this one on its own i, I mean it's not a, a bad shade it's a nice shade uh, i think that 
swatch is better than this shade on its own, but not better than this. This is just stunning. So eventually I decided to swatch these two held together. So it'll be two mallard greens held together to make this swatch and I'm not wasting any more um, yarn on swatches so I've just held together with a safety pin. Uh, sorry about the... I was making... So I started off here in 4 or 4.5 and this graduated towards 5 and then 5.5 .5, and then 6 and then 6.5 and I believe it ended on 7, sorry, just where the safety pin is, that is 7, and I still feel that 7 is giving me a very nice and dense enough fabric. Like it's actually quite dense fabric, even in 7. I am pretty sure I could go up to 7.5 or even 8 with these two DK held together. And I think one of the reasons why I want to do that is simply so that I could get through, like this shawl, the playful shawl is taking me, I know it's going to take me ages because of the stitch count, it's very small, but if you have to do less stitches, then maybe you can get through the shawl quicker, I might, or am I getting this totally wrong, <laughs> I, I might just take the same amount of time making the shawl and make it much bigger, I do not know how this works, I'm not very good at maths or physics <laughs> or logic, <laughs> but yeah, so... That was my reasoning. Or in the end, do you know what? Because I've got a feeling that I might just um, take the same amount of time, but I might end up with a massive shawl <laughs> on 8mm needles held double. So I might just go for a uh, mallard green uh, held singly on its own, on probably 5 or 4.5. Probably 5mm needles. So, yes. Um, so I've completed two garments. I think I've already shown this hat and what it was based on and I explained some of my problems with the rim. I love the effect of this rim, however it was a wee bit tight so I cast on four or, yeah, four more, four, either four or six more stitches on this one and um, this rim was really nice. I like the way it sits on my head, it doesn't um, cut in and I love this fabric. This is Drops Wish in sea green, held together with Drops Kid Silk in North Sea. And it is a stunning, stunning shade. Which I love. Now, one of the mistakes I've made, and I am absolutely kicking myself for this, but you live and you learn, is out of curiosity, like just simple curiosity, when I realised that I had enough fabric on the crown, because I was basically, even though I followed um, a pattern at first, the gauge was all wrong, so I was just making up my own and taking advice from the pattern on how to do, you know, certain things. But I just measured this hat on my own. I didn't count how many rows I had to do by, you know, by what the pattern was saying. I was just doing it as to see um, my own, like, you know, measurements. So once I realised that up till here, that's enough fabric from the crown, I'll start my decreases. On this one, I placed five stitch markers and made a single decrease before every stitch marker. On this one, for some reason I thought, mm, I wonder what would happen if I made a decrease before and after the stitch marker. I think it's called a double decrease and what happened was the crown decreased very steeply as opposed to this one. This one gives me a lot of um, room in the crown and yeah and and I like to put my hair up into my hat and this one just doesn't cut it I mean it's um I can wear it on my head no problem but I just can't put my hair up which annoys me a wee bit because I put my hair up in a bun sometimes as well and then I put my hat on top which creates a bit of volume on the crown of the head so I'm thinking about maybe frogging this I don't know because I still use it. I still use it a lot. I'm actually this is why I can find it before I was like um, in the hat and coat rack downstairs. No, actually, it was in the bottom. Of my <laughs> okay, but whatever. It's something that I use. I know I use it. So shall I make it better? 
by frogging it and redoing it the top bit so that the decreases are just single decreases because I've got more yarn on this left I've got both of these um, left or should I just leave it and use because I'm still using it as is um, but I absolutely love Drops Wish this is Drops Wish held with mohair and it's got that lovely halo but if you notice this is Drops Wish this is in grey beige uh, on its own there's no more hair on this but it does still give a certain uh, halo-ish type of effect I don't know but um, yeah this is an amazing this would be an amazing in a vest I think um, you know something really cozy or even something up against your skin there's no itchiness to this at all but yeah and um, lastly um, in my knitting journey I was thinking of moving away from, you know, miscreating squares, so this is why I'm trying to do, well, I've managed to understand knitting in the round and making, uh, learning new techniques in shawls, but I've ended up making <laughs> more rectangular squares because I don't know if you remember the headband I was making out of that awful acrylic. Um, initially I thought I'm going to complete that headband and then just not use that yarn anymore but I just could not work with it so I quickly bound off and sewed it up and the headband I made was like a child size uh, so I gave it to my niece and I saw her mother wearing it, her my sister-in-law um, which, because she's, I've, like I said, I've got a bigger head than most people <laughs> she's got a normal sized head and she was wearing it just fine and my mum really liked it so she's requested a headband as well which is basically another rectangle <laughs> Another rectangle I'm going to be making again. I've, I've been doing this for like four months, you know, I wanted to like uh, graduate up from it, evolve up, but you know, she wanted a headband and they're really useful. We all use headbands and to be honest, I'll be making a few headbands for myself as well because we all use headbands in this family and um, yeah, so she wanted a dark shade and I am using my favourite shade, dark green natural for her. And this is this knitted up on four millimetres. Oh, let me get the nice and just so pretty this is in garter stitch so I don't know what it's going to be like in stock in it but so pretty look at that shade I knew this was going to be nice I mean even though I have it in my um, shawl back there sorry about the focus um, this lens isn't that powerful it's okay at, the, uh, at certain uh, you know near distances but not too far but yeah the shawl doesn't showcase because it's broken up with burgundy Whereas this showcase is just a dark grey natural and I absolutely love it. I'm so glad. I think I'll be picking up this shade whenever I buy from them. And again this is the yarn held double because I do have three cones of this. So very, very nice. And I think, yep, I think that is all for today. So... Oh god, should I do a roundup? Just my purchases. Okay, I'll do a roundup just my purchases because that is something I think I do know. <laughs> so that's a dark grey natural in DK weight. This is rustic. Rustic in DK. I don't think I even said the name of this, that's quite bad. But rustic in Diggle DK. Rustic Nep, sorry, in Diggle DK. And this is Oatmeal DK 500 gram Merino Hunk. That is chocolate, no, what am I saying? Charcoal Grey 500 gram DK Hunk. This is my Nazareth. These are the 200 gram hunks. And that is all for my purchases. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.